Meanwhile, the law has helped hold the price of health care to its slowest growth in 50 years. If your family gets insurance through your job, so you're not using the Affordable Care Act, you're still paying about $1,800 less per year on average than you would be if we hadn't done anything. This law is working as act exactly as it's supposed to. In many ways, this law is working better than we expected it to. All right, I don't know what he's talking about, $1,800 a year or less than an average, and yeah, whatever. But adjoining us now is Jennifer Rubin, Washington Post columnist, author of the Right Turn blog at the Washington Post. Jennifer, great to see you. So um, your take on the 6-3 uh, to three decision, everybody's concentrating on Roberts. Roberts could have voted with the other three. We, they still would have lost that case. Right. It didn't seem that close, actually, at the end of the day. I confess I was not as optimistic as a lot of conservatives that the court was ever going to throw this out. This court has basically said to the country, you guys figure it out. Um, this law is highly contentious. It's going to be decided in elections. And don't expect us to save you from Obamacare. That's kind of the bottom line. It's not a legal opinion, but that's sort of the, the upshot. And I think for conservatives, this really does hit home. We cannot expect, um, once again, to have the court bail us out. If you lose elections, there are consequences. And we had better keep that in mind in 2016 and pick someone who can win the White House. Otherwise, this is going to be the law of the land for the foreseeable future. A absolutely. But, and, and along those lines, and this is straying a little, what, what's your take on this this do-nothing Congress. I mean, you know, they let President Obama get away with saying everything he said. Yet, of course, the mandates that, were, were, that will affect 80 million people don't even kick in until 2016. That's number one. People have lost their doctors. People have been forced to change hospitals who have cancer. Uh, deductibles are now $6,000. Uh, so where are the Republicans coming forward to, re to re you know, rebuke what, what Obama has said? Why is it me saying this to you? Listen, the House has repealed Obamacare a zillion times. Um, unless you have a filibuster-proof Senate and you have the White House, it's not going away. Um, and we got a lot of Senate seats last time. You're going to need more um, or you're going to need reconciliation, but that only helps if you have the White House. So I don't think it's been a lack of trying necessarily. Um, I do think that we too often have made these legalistic arguments as opposed to arguing about the effects of the law. And that I do hold Congress responsible, but that's also the job of these presidential candidates, to explain to people why it is a bad law. The president gets out there, as you just said, and throws around these numbers, $1,800, bup it up, bup it up, bup. Right. I don't think that's the case. Um, but where are the hard luck stories on the other side? I think their job is a political one to explain to the country why this is bad, and right. oh, by the way, they better come up with an alternative because they're not going to beat something with nothing. Right, which is exactly what I meant, the, 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 their job to, uh, to explain right. to the public why this is bad. Now, you wrote a piece about um, uh, the, the Iran deal, and very interesting in quoting the man who uh, Obama wanted to replace Netanyahu, uh, saying there is no difference between me and Prime Minister Netanyahu in reading the threat of Iran. I think that's very interesting. But we're five days away now from a deal deadline, which they could push back. Uh, Iran is keeps spinning in our face, and, and, and we stay at the table. Right. I think it is almost inconceivable to me that Obama will ever walk away. Even if he doesn't reach a deal, they'll just keep talking. Um, <laughs> and maybe eventually they'll reach a deal. Um, at some point, talk about Congress acting, um, the Senate needs to hold the Senate Democrats to their word. Back um, in March, um, actually it was in February, they made the deal. They agreed that they would bring new sanctions to the table. Um, that then came the uh, framework agreement, if you remember, which isn't much of an agreement, yep. and it just died. They need to bring tough sanctions back on the floor of the Senate, pass those, and they really need to start laying out in some detail what they think is an acceptable deal. And there's lots of things that Congress can do, including some more severe oversight in terms of what we've given away, uh, yep. what Iran is up to, and why we shouldn't have I, this I, I, I just wouldn't hold my breath on this Congress doing anything. Jennifer, great to talk to you again. Reader at the Right Turn blog at the Washington Post.